All right, so we are being recorded. There so welcome, <laughs> welcome everybody to our uh, next session of our Daniel Bible study. And uh, let me open us with a word of prayer. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for your word, the way that it uh, nourishes our souls and helps us to see you better, help us to know you better, uh, and help us to um, live as your disciples more faithfully. Uh, thank you for our communion that we have here today through you. And may it be a blessing to us and to those who will be watching uh, that we may learn and grow in your word. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So uh, I always like to check in in the beginning to see how we're doing with our prayer focus. And uh, if you recall, we had been uh, focusing on the challenge of the church, uh, our church, the church, with um, getting people back to worship, <laughs> as well as uh, bringing in new people. So um, anybody have any insights this week, any inspiration this week while praying? Well, as a matter of fact, I do. Mm. Um, I, you know, um, it's impressed me uh, now we've been praying about this for a couple of weeks in a in a kind of an organized, uh, um, you know, fashion where we're it's a focus, a good focus. So, uh, what has impressed me this week is that when um, Friendship Community Church was beginning, <laughs> there was a lot of, um, um, well, I guess you would call it publicity in a way. There were letters sent out. There were uh, uh, reminders and all the. Uh, we're starting a new church, and um, this is where it's gonna. This is where it is, and so forth. Um, long story short, I think we need to get a little bit of publicity out there in the form of um, a note, uh, on sent with a, a card, maybe, uh, and uh, get that sent out to all of our members, our congregation, uh, members and friends to start with, and then to go into uh, the neighborhoods, to go into the community. But we need, we need to draw people back in, in such a way that they're feeling like, gee, I have been missing this and I do want to feel welcomed, you know? And so uh, it's something like on, on that sort of an idea. And uh, I guess what also impresses me about it is that with the caring ministry, with sending out cards for occasions, I often think about, you know, maybe it'd be a good idea if we just sent out cards every so often to people who we haven't heard from and, um, and just, you know, let them know they're missed. Mm -hmm. And also we need to uh, have something on there about all the precautions that we're taking so that everybody is safe, you know? So something like that um, and, and get it out to, uh, as I say, everybody, all of our uh, friends and members to start with. So I don't know how that sounds to anybody else, but it kind of makes sense to me. So. Sounds good to me. I like the idea of the cards. Yeah, the other cards yeah. I think is very good. Yeah, the cards and then, you know, to uh, also include in there the information about the things that we're doing to keep you safe during this time. And um, so that people, because I know a lot of a lot of people are just still afraid to, um, to leave their home, you mm -hmm. know, or be around other people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if they know that these precautions are being taken, even though they've you know, they've been told people have just been advertised and everything, but still on a personal level, yeah, personal level with a, a, a sort of a little greeting card, uh, thinking of you type of thing. Mm -hmm. so. I was, uh, I did an internship in a church in West Virginia back when I was in seminary and once a month they had postcards with the picture of their church on the one side and then on the mm -hmm. inside of a postcard, if you will, they would pass those out or put them in the bulletin once a month. So one Sunday a month. And then they would uh, have a list in the bulletin of people that you could address it to. 
not necessarily with their address, but their name. Mm -hmm. so it could have been anybody from a shut-in to maybe, mm -hmm. like you're saying, somebody that hasn't been there in a while or anybody. Could be anybody. It could be somebody that, you know, maybe visited the church one time or somebody you're thinking of trying to reach, you know, and, uh, right. and they would all go in the collection plate and then the secretary would address them. Mm -hmm. so that, that would be left up to the secretary and then mail them out. Because one of the mm -hmm. things is when you're in a hospital, I don't know if they're still going to do that or not, but when they would put them up on the, you know how people, when they get a lot of cards, they put them up on either the bulletin board in the room or the, the wall or something like that. Yeah. They yeah. would have the picture of the church up there. Mm -hmm. So everybody that went in and out of that room yeah. would see it. Yeah, that's an excellent idea. It's just, yeah. it's just some way to uh, contact some way to contact people, especially those who have not been coming. And I, I noticed this actually a few years ago. I noticed that it actually does work I, on a smaller scale because we have a, well, we have a very active family in our congregation now um, who had stopped coming. And this was when we were still at Friendship. Uh, they had stopped coming. And uh, when it came that time of year when one of the children or one of the parents had a, a birthday coming up. And of course, you know, I would send out the greeting. And I noticed that within the next couple of weeks, the family started coming back. Hmm. And I thought, well, maybe they just needed to be reminded that we care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, I think that's a great idea. And, you know, it had the picture, a picture of the church. Well, right away, you see that and you're reminded um, yeah, this is my church. I'm welcome here. People do care about me. Yeah. So. Well, we'll have to, yeah, we'll have to look at that. You know, the one team we don't have is an outreach team. And I know, Pat, you've yeah. expressed interest in it, which I can see, again, just hearing you talk, I can see you have a passion for that. Um, but we've yeah. got to get at least one other person to join you. Right. Um, so that we can get that off the ground, um, that kind of stuff. Yeah. That was what Linda and I were going to do. We were going to go hang the door hangers and things like yeah. that. So. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Well, let's well, let's, yeah. pray, let's pray along those lines. Um, mm -hmm. And even with the egg hunt, you know, that's what came to my to my mind. This right. week was specifically praying about the egg hunt uh, that's coming mm -hmm. up because that's going to be out in public. That's going to be an invitation event. Um, I went down to the sign place right down the street from the church um, mm -hmm. and. Uh, put in a, a message for them to get back to me about putting together a sign. They're the ones who did the signs when we had bring a friend Sunday. Remember the sign okay. in the front? Very nice. Very nice job. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe I can get them to do some postcards for us. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that would cut down on postage if you're sending postcards too. I mean, you, you know, you can get a little bit cheaper postage for a postcard. And that yeah. helps too. <laughs> yeah. True. So. Good. Good. All right. Well, you've given us something else to, to think about. Okay. Welcome, Glenn and Nancy. Hello, hello. We see you now. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello, <laughs> hello, hello. Hello. So, um, all right. Well, anybody else want to add to, to that before we jump in? All right. I guess we'll uh, continue. Well, we'll talk more about our prayer focus at the end. See uh, where we can maybe zero in a little bit more. All right, so uh, we are picking back up where we left off last uh, week. We are at chapter five today, mm -hmm. and uh, I invite you to turn to chapter five, and we are going to read through the story, so whoever is feeling led to read that. Hey, remember that story, I, remember that story I was tell, telling you about, I, I know another Another prophet who was uh, persecuted. Yeah. That one day he got in his room and prayed that they caught him and turned him into the king and everything. Yeah. Isn't that different prophet? It was Daniel. <laughs> I just we just didn't get to this chapter yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. We're there. We're almost there. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But yeah, this chapter we're going to read straight through. So chapter five, if somebody wants to read that chapter for us, because it flows very nicely. I'll take it. <clears throat> Thanks, Amanda. All right. Uh, 
King, King Belshazzar made a great festival for a thousand of his lords, and he was drinking wine in the presence of the thousand. Under the influence of the wine, Belshazzar commanded that they bring in the vessels of gold and silver that his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple in Jerusalem so that the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines might drink from them. So they brought in the vessels of gold and silver that had been taken out of the temple, the house of God in Jerusalem, and the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines drank from them. They drank the wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Immediately, the fingers of a human hand appeared and began writing on the plaster of the wall of the royal palace next to the lampstand. The king was watching the hand as it wrote. Then the king's face turned pale and his thoughts terrified him. His limbs gave way and his knees knocked together. The king cried aloud and bring, to bring in the enchanters, the Chaldeans, and the diviners. And the king said to the wise men of Babylon, Whoever can read this writing and tell me its interpretation shall be clothed in purple, have a chain of gold around his neck, and rank third in the kingdom. Then all the king's wise men came in, but they couldn't read the writing or tell the king the interpretation. Then King Belshazzar became greatly terrified, and his face turned pale, and his lords were perplexed. The queen, when she heard the discussion of the king and his lords, came into the banqueting hall. The queen said, O king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts terrify you or your face grow pale. There is a man in your kingdom who is endowed with a spirit of the holy gods. <clears throat> in the days of your father, he was found to have enlightenment, understanding, and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods. Your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, made him chief of the magicians, enchanters, Chaldeans, and diviners, because an excellent spirit, knowledge, and understanding to interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve problems were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will give the interpretation. Then Daniel was brought in before the king. The king said to Daniel, so you are Daniel, one of the exiles of Judah, whom my father, the king, brought from Judah. I have heard of you, I have heard of you that you have a spirit of the gods in you and that enlightenment, understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Now the wise men, the enchanters have been brought in before me to read this writing and tell me its interpretation. But they were not able to give the interpretation of the matter. But I have heard that you can give interpretations and solve problems. Now, if you are able to read the writing and tell me his interpretation, you shall be clothed in purple, have a chain of gold around your neck, and rank third in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered in the presence of the king, let your gifts be for yourself or give your rewards to someone else. Nevertheless, I will read, and I will read the writing to the king and let him know the interpretation. O king, the most high God gave your father Nebuchadnezzar kingship, greatness, glory, and majesty. And because of the greatness that he gave him, all peoples, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. He killed those he wanted to kill, kept alive those he wanted to keep alive, honored those he wanted to honor, and degraded those he wanted to degrade. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened so that he acted proudly, he was deposed from his kingly throne and his glory was stripped from him. He was driven from human society and his mind and was made like that of an animal. His dwelling was with the wild asses. He was fed grass like oxen, and his body was bathed with the dew of heaven until he learned that the Most High God has sovereignty over the kingdom of mortals and sets over it whomever he will. And you, Belshazzar, his son, have not humbled your heart, even though you knew all this. You have exalted yourself against the Lord of heaven. The vessels of his temple have been brought in before you, and you and your lords, your wives, and your concubines have been drinking wine from them. You have praised the gods of silver and gold, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which do not see or hear or know. But the God in whose power is your very breath, and to whom belong all your ways, you have not honored. So from his presence, the hand was sent, and this writing was inscribed. And this is the writing that was inscribed, inscribed. Men, 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 
Tekel, and Parson. This is the interpretation of the matter. Men, God has numbered the days of your kingdom and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighted on the scales and found wanting. Paris, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then Belshazzar gave the command and Daniel was clothed in purple. A chain of gold was put around his neck and a proclamation was made concerning him that he should rank third in the kingdom. That very night, Belshazzar, the Chaldean king, was killed, and Darius the Mede received the kingdom, being about 62 years old. All right. Thank you, Armando. <clears throat> All right. Has anybody uh, ever heard this story before or remember reading it before? Mm hmm. So, one of those amazing uh, stories at the end. This is where you get the, the saying, the writing on the wall. <laughs> writing on the wall. Yeah, yeah. the writing's on the wall. <laughs> he saw the writing on the wall. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and I, I don't know if you saw, but I, I included a famous painting that Rembrandt did. Uh, did you get a chance to look right. at that? There you go. That's a, yeah. a famous painting that he did for uh, a depiction that he saw from this uh, this part of the Bible. He, he did a few biblical paintings. He did the prodigal son as well, if you've ever seen that one. But um, you can see in the picture, there's the, the king, Belshazzar, right in the center. And you can see the goblets and the goldware that they uh, mm -hmm. had taken yeah. to use. You know, they were sacred vessels. And then all the way up in the right-hand corner, the hand, all you see is the hand and then the writing up there in uh, the Hebrew. <laughs> right. So very interesting to see that. There's even a video out on YouTube, although the video is not the best, but there is a video out there too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, now we're down to Nebuchadnezzar's son, Belshazzar. And uh, this is the only reference I believe to him here in Daniel. And that is um, the famous story of the writing on the wall. And uh, of course, what, what does it mean, this writing? It means that he's going down. Yeah. <laughs> so fast. The shorthand version. <laughs> no, no doubt about it, right? He's had his chance. <laughs> yeah, uh, specifically, uh, his days are numbered. The, the, his kingdom is found wanting. He's weighed in the balance, and he found that he's, he's coming up short. And that his kingdom will be divided because the next superpower on the horizon is a joint effort between the Mer Medes and the Persians. Mm -hmm. And then eventually it will just be the Persians, but that's, that's the next superpower coming. So this mm -hmm. is a prediction of that. And of course, how soon after he hears this message, does it begin? Right, right away. away. Yeah. Then, yep. <laughs> One of those occasions where God speaks it, his prophet tells it uh, and it happens, mm -hmm. as so often was the case with the prophets. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So this will be the end of Babylon. Okay, the end of the Babylonian uh, empire, if you will. It's going to be handed over now. And of course, uh, the exiles will now become uh, property of the Medes and the Persians, although the Persians will treat them much better. Um, but Babylon, this isn't the only point in scripture where Babylon is mentioned, or at least the word or the term Babylon. Have you ever heard of Babylon being mentioned anywhere else in the Bible? Yeah, but I can't remember where. I, it's it gonna seems be in the, that it wasn't in a good light. No, definitely not. It's in the New York. Right? Cool. What's that? They were cruel uh, to their, yeah. those that they took over? Uh, well, yeah, Babylon is, is never going to be deemed in a good light in the scripture. Yes. Um, what's that? Oh, okay, I thought I saw somebody. Um, in the New Testament, Babylon comes up again in the book of Revelation. Right. book of revelation and if you look in revelation 17 and 18 chapter 17 and 18 
and we're not going to go into a lot of detail, but I just want to show you where it focuses. It comes up before that in, in chapters 14 and chapter 16, but 17 and 18 is really where you see it. Um, if you look in 17, Babylon. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And on his, her forehead, a name was written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, the abominations of the earth. Yep. Hmm. So, of course, there's a lot of uh, speculation about who is Babylon when you reach this point of the Bible in the book of Revelation. But then in chapter 18, you have the fall of Babylon. Ooh. But it, Babylon is not a, a positive reference. So if we ever do a study on Revelation, again, we'll have to look into that more closely. But that's where the other part of the reference to Babylon comes, all the way over in Revelation. But here you see the end. This is the end of Babylon. Uh, comes in the book of Daniel. The beginning of the Medes and the Persians. So... Um, Again, the sovereignty of God, right? We've seen this before with Belshazzar's dad. Uh, what's the difference here, though? What's the difference between Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar? Well, uh, Belshazzar, I think, I mean, the, well, these people uh, don't learn. I mean, he had all the uh, experience with his father. He would have thought that he would have learned something from everything his father went through. And he goes back and he does the same thing or worse. Mm -hmm. so he didn't learn anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How else is he different from his dad? Big difference. He also doesn't seem to uh, question his advisors. When the advisors tell him something, it's, oh, okay. <laughs> we'll do it that way. Um, when they were telling him that... Uh, Daniel did not, uh, you know, when they made that uh, uh, decree that um, everyone, the, the only um, being that could be worshipped would be the king himself. Oh, that's the next chapter. No, 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 we're not there yet. Uh, okay, I'm way ahead of it. <laughs> no, 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 we're not there yet. <laughs> no, I just want to deal with chapter five first. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, hold on to that thought. But right here, what... What do you notice is a huge difference between this man and his dad? He was very, he was very afraid when he read the writing on the wall. He didn't know what it meant, but he, he said that his knees started shaking and he was like terrified that he didn't know what, what, what it meant. Yeah. And, and what does that lead to for him? He does doesn't it, have much regard for, for the God of Daniel because he, took their cups and everything uh, from the temple and was drinking out of them. And he didn't really know his, Daniel's God too much, except uh, from what his queen told him. Yeah, you see the same pattern here, right? There's, there's a, um, a pride in this leader. The leader is confronted by God's prophet. And then there's a reaction. So the first two parts are the same. Right, Nebuchadnezzar and his son, both their pride is keeping them from recognizing the true God. The prophet is literally the same, same guy, but the, the reaction is different, isn't it? It's like there is no reaction. I mean, the, his father pretty much started saying that God was the greatest of all the gods and everything else, and he started singing praises to God, and this guy basically doesn't do anything. He just... Oh. Uh, once he interpreted the dream, he went ahead and gave him the reward of get, making him the third person in the kingdom, but he didn't, he didn't do anything else. He didn't praise God. No, he never repented. He never did anything, yeah. He never changed. He never did like his dad, even though his dad, it took a couple tries. He, he right. never even got to that point where he recognized the God of Daniel and praised him and uh, started to change a little bit. No, nope. mm -hmm. and he had yeah. no time. 
Oh, he only had a night. <laughs> that was it. That's all he had. Yeah. So that's a big, big difference there. Um, yeah. You know, even after seven years of torture there, Nebuchadnezzar finally realized, you know, I've right. got to change. But this guy, nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting here how, how the difference of reactions between these two um, foreign kings uh, mm -hmm. and just a generation apart. But of course, anybody who went through the king study, Armando, first and second kings, first and second Samuel as well, uh, we know that that's uh, not unusual, even for the Jewish kings, no. right? <laughs> that's the usual, the usual behavior. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so not good, not good. But yeah, that, that uh, would be very important there, uh, the difference in response. Because uh, it's the same issue. It's God's sovereignty. He, he's uh, being taught the same lesson his dad was taught. You know, don't disregard the God who is in control of history, of the nations, etc. The other thing I think that comes up to the forefront is the way that it seems this king was mixing his beliefs, his religious beliefs, with the Jewish uh, religion. And where does that mingling come in this story? Where do the two or the, his face? At his, at his feast where they, uh, they were, you know, everybody was using the, the golden vessels, gold and silver vessels, and they were um, kind of, um, they were, they were just casting Casting their uh, um, any kind of um, care to the wind. They're, they weren't. He wasn't doing anything as far as uh, worshiping God because it was a lot of pagan worship. It seemed to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that would be like us taking the communion ware and bringing it home, and you know, throwing a party with it. Right. You know, it, it, it wasn't respected. It, yeah. Yeah. That the. I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing that I've learned, and uh, it seems that even up through the New Testament, man has not learned that Pilate should have listened to his wife and Belshazzar should have listened to his wife. Yeah, he did. He did listen to his wife, didn't he? And see, you better do it. There you go. If you don't. <laughs> but yeah, the the, the unholy use of holy vessels, vessels that are set apart for God and worship of God, was violated here. And um, that cost Belshazzar uh, there. Uh, and, and I wonder, you know, in today's world, do we see any of that kind of mixing uh, of the Christian religion, per se, with other uh, beliefs or other pieces of other religions? Do we see that? in today's world at all? Oh yeah, just read the bumper sticker, coexist. Coexist. Bumper, bumper sticker coexist with all the, the religious symbols on it. I've never seen one. <laughs> you never saw one? No, I haven't. Yeah, yeah I, I know which one you mean. I know which one you mean. Yeah. 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 Mm. And how is that a... Um, how is that a, a mingling of, uh, say, Christianity with non-Christian religions? No. Well, you're saying non-Christian non religions? You mean like, uh, so I, for example, uh, uh, what would be a, Judaism would be an example of a non-Christian religion, right? Right. Any, Are there any holidays, the two missing? Yeah. Because what I'm trying to draw a parallel between is here you have Belshazzar, who obviously was worshiping all these inanimate gods, you know, gold, mm -hmm. silver, stone, iron, wood. Um, and here he is taking the vessels of the Jewish religion, which he knew came out of their temple. His dad had actually taken them out at, because they're gold, you know, they're valuable. And he's using them, uh, misusing them really uh, for their, their proper use. And, you know, do we do things like that? Do we see 
perhaps the church and the beliefs of the Christian religion uh, mingling with other religious beliefs that are not Christian? Do we see any of that kind of thing going on? And you mentioned the, the coexist. How would that be an example of that? Well, you become tolerant of other religions. I mean, um, I, I guess if you have, um, I mean, we check the astrology report on the, or some people do check the astrology uh, reports on the newspaper and everything like that. So that's definitely not Christian, but we still do that. Yeah, uh, that's, that's another uh, example. But but the, the coexist, um, now coexist, obviously America has freedom of religion. So there, we've made room in this country for people to worship as they please. I mean, that's one of the founding statements of our, our country. Um, but at the same time, isn't there a, a conflict if we say that all these religions are, are true? They can't all be true. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Um, Why can't they all be true, Glenn? Well, uh, Mohammed or, or uh, I mean, uh, Mohammed, uh, oh, geez, I can't think of Mohammed's God. Who's Mohammed's God? The, who does Mohammed worship? Oh, well, Allah, Allah. Oh, you know, okay. Allah, Allah's right, but uh, he's definitely not uh, Jesus Christ, and and Buddha is right, but uh, that differs from what we believe. I mean, Hinduism, you know, we're just one of a bunch of different lives, and you know, we don't believe that. Uh, I don't know uh, how that coexists with our religion now. I mean. We coexist, but I mean, how is it that our religion is intermingled with that? Well, if one, if what you believe, a religion is supposed to declare the truth. Right. The true, the true God. Mm -hmm. So if you say that, yeah, all these religions are, are, are true, how can that be if we profess things like um, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? And you can only come to the Father through Him. That's going to be a conflict inherently. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I, thought, I mentioned what I thought you meant is what from other religions are we incorporating into our own? That's what I thought you meant. Yeah, well that well you brought up the coexist, so I went with that. But yeah, I oh, mean, okay. are there other areas where? Uh, you know, people are intermingling. We call it sync. Uh, syncretizing religion you know in other words i like this about that religion well, they might take they might take a, a piece of one they, they take basically whatever they like whatever they think suits their uh, their ideology or, or their way of life uh, i'll take this piece from christianity i take this other piece from judaism or from buddhism mm -hmm. and it's just whatever whatever they're trying to do to make them fit their own way of life what they want to do yeah. So they're not really believing in any one religion. They're just taking pieces of each one of different ones. Yeah. Yeah. Some people yeah. saying that uh, they believe in God, but I don't need to go to church would be one example I think that stands out because God wants us to be together. He wants a community. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want uh, somebody to delude themselves into thinking they can do it. Just me and God, that's it. No, it don't work that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's one of them. That's a good one. Yep. Um, that was another good one I was thinking of when I, you were talking, Armando. Um, oh, authority of scripture. I love Jesus, but I don't want to hear about the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that's a big one. Uh, we call that the uh, buffet religion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's pick and choose what you like. <laughs> That doesn't work unless you're in Pennsylvania Dutch country. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, you know, it, it's it's that kind of thing, and um, it, it's a it's a slippery slope, you know. People that say, "Oh, well, you know, I'm a Christian, but there's more than one way to get into heaven." Whoa, wait a minute. No, <laughs> that's yeah, not what yeah. we believe. <laughs> but there are Christians that'll say that. 
you know. Mm-hmm. So that that's a conflict right there. Um, but you know that was a danger for Daniel, wasn't it? Because here he is, strange land, strange culture, different religion. He's mm-hmm. supposed to be a faithful Jew, <laughs> and what are the the temptations around him? There's a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and he faced yeah. that constantly. Um, so I have a question. Who's number two? Why could the nanny? Who, why couldn't Daniel be number two? Why he has to be number three? <laughs> number two, because he listens to his wife. Yeah, I was gonna say his wife was number two. His wife was number two. Yeah, you gotta listen to. That's your what wife. I thought. You gotta rewind the tape, Armando, and see what Glenn said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that, you know, uh, I, I think uh, it's something to think about, you know, but we still have that sovereignty of God issue that's going on here. So, all right. So chapter five was nice narrative, pretty much parallel to what we've been seeing. Let's go to chapter six, because now the focus goes back to Daniel himself. And we're going to read this in parts. Uh, so it, if somebody would read chapter six, verses one through nine, now we're going to get to the story that Pat was referring to. I'll read it. Okay, Pat. <laughs> it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120, um, how is that pronounced? Satraps? Satraps. Yep. Satraps. Stationed throughout the whole kingdom and over them three presidents, including Daniel. To these, the satraps gave account so that the king might suffer no loss. Soon, Daniel distinguished himself above all the other presidents and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king planned to appoint him over the whole kingdom. Mm -hmm. So the presidents and the satraps tried to find grounds for complaint against Daniel in connection with the kingdom. But they could find no grounds for complaint or any corruption because he was faithful and no negligence or corruption could be found in him. The men said, We shall not find any ground for complaint against this Daniel unless we find it in connection with the law of his God. So the presidents and satraps conspired and came to the kingdom and king and said to him, O King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the prefects and the satraps, the counselors and the governors are agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce an interdict that Whoever prays to anyone, divine or human, for 30 days, except to you, O king, shall be thrown into a den of lions. Now, O king, establish the interdict and sign the document so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. Therefore, King Darius signed the document and interdict. So I bet you never knew that there was a president in the Old Testament. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, how about that? (laughs) And Daniel was one of the presidents. One of them. (laughs) What's that? (laughs) Daniel was one of them. Yeah. 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 President Daniel. (laughs) And the others didn't like him. (laughs) Yeah, and why don't they like him? What's the problem here? Because he's teacher's pet. He's number one. Yeah, this is so much like so much like anything on him. So much like the story of Joseph, who God was the one that made special, and everybody around him was jealous. That's right. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Now the king planned to appoint him over the whole kingdom. Well, that didn't sit very well with these presidents and satraps. Sure, because if there's only one position and there's 120 of them that want it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, but as far as Daniel's life, going pretty good, right? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. God's, uh, God's making a way for him, much yeah. like Joseph. You yeah. Know? Much like Joseph. And he is not about to worship the king. He's going to worship God. You know, it seems to me that uh, it's a shame that we don't throw some of our politicians in with the lions. Don't start. Don't start. <laughs> well, the trap has been set. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Up to this point, there's a rivalry 
Uh, Daniel is doing well. Uh, and notice uh, the king, once he says something, it can't be revoked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's interesting. But Okay. Yeah. So he signs it. Now it's law. Yeah. So let's read 10 through 18 now, if somebody would. I'll take it. Okay. Although Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he continued to go to his house, which had windows in its upper room open toward Jerusalem, and to get down on his knees three times a day to pray to his God and praise him. Just as he had done previously, the conspirators came and found Daniel praying and seeking mercy before his God. Then they approached the king and said concerning the interdict, O king, did you not sign an interdict that anyone who prays to anyone, divine or human, within 30 days, except to you, O king, shall be thrown into a den of lions? The king answered, the thing stands fast according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be revoked. Then they responded to the king, Daniel, one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or to the interdict you have signed, but he is saying his prayers three times a day. When the king heard the charge, he was very much distressed. He was determined to save Daniel, and until the sun went down, he made every effort to rescue him. Then the conspirators came to the king and said to him, No, O king, that it is a law of the Medes and Persians that no interdict or ordinance that the king establishes can be changed. Then the king gave the command and Daniel was brought and thrown into the den of lions. The king said to Daniel, may your God whom you faithfully serve deliver you. A stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, so that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. No food was brought to him and slept fled from him. Okay. So a trap was set. Yeah. Daniel walks right into it. Really? Right? Mm -hmm. I think I think the king walked right into it. Ah, not Daniel. I mean, the king, if I was the king, I would have started asking, well, why are these guys telling me to pass this kind of a law? Irrevocable. When you pass a law, it's supposedly irrevocable. Yeah. Why are they doing that? I mean, they didn't tell him that Daniel was doing any praying. They just basically, oh, you should pass this law. And he fell right into the trap. Yeah. Then he didn't want Daniel to die. But yeah. they kind of said, well, now you have to do it because this law is irrevocable. Yeah. So I think he fell into a trap. Mm. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, and you notice they said uh, back in verse uh, 7, all the presidents of the kingdom, that would be Daniel too, right? Uh huh. The prefects uh -huh. of the safe traps, the counselors, and the governors are agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce its inter an interdict. Right. So and that's the other thing that Daniel, Daniel probably didn't know anything about it. And they not. said that everybody had agreed. They also lied. Yep. Yep. That's the way it sounds. That Daniel was left out of that. Yep. That whole thing. Yep. And the actually, uh, uh, the king doesn't sound too uh, too smart. Right. He seemed to accept what they said to him and without question. Mm -hmm. And the old then he was, very, he was very sorry that he was going to have to throw Daniel uh, into the lion's den. He, he didn't like that before Paul. He, he fasted. He didn't sleep. He, um, I think he didn't know what to make of it once he yeah. signed that and uh, had to had to, to keep with it what it said. You know, But I think he was really sorry that it happened. Yeah, you could see that with him, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. He does everything he can up until sundown uh, to try and rescue him, mm -hmm. to rescue Daniel. Yes. Um, and Daniel, did he know about the decree once it was signed? 
Yeah, verse 10 tells you he did. Yeah. But what does he do? Oh, yeah. He ignores it. He does. He prays and worships his God anyway. Right. right. He doesn't change anything. No. He doesn't change mm -hmm. anything. He stayed faithful. And he made sure he prayed by that window so they could see him. Yeah, yeah that's something he must yeah. have always done. He always, always done, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like he didn't do it in secret so like nobody else knew. Right, right. He was very yeah. open about it. Yep, yep. He really didn't change anything. Probably, probably a good sign Daniel wasn't there when they approved this because he probably would have said, you know, I pray to my God three times a day. And I'm supposed to pray to the king. We got a problem here. You know, so probably he didn't know. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So, okay. Well, let's see what happens here. Who wants to read 19 through 28? Then uh, I'll read it. Okay. Then, then the, the king arose early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve, continually been able to deliver you from lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth so they have not hurt me, because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken out of the den and no injury whatever was found on him because he believed in his God. Should I keep going? Yeah, you can read all the way to the end. Oh, oh okay. And the king gave the command and they brought those men who had accused Daniel and they cast mm -hmm. them into the den of lions. Them, their children, and their wives, and the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces before they ever came to the bottom of the dam. So much violence. Mm. Yeah. But then King Darius wrote, To all peoples and nations and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I made to make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is one which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall endure to the end. He delivers and rescues and he works signs and wonders in heaven and earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? Uh, who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. All right. Thank you. So, what happens to Daniel? He gets elevated again. At, at the end, yes. Yep. But what happened when he was in the lion's den? Nothing. His faith saved him. Hmm? Yeah. God, God rescues him. Yep. Yeah. God rescues him. And uh, I know I heard a few of you uh, talking about the violence. Oh, yeah. Yeah, really. I mean, why the wives and the children? They were innocent bystanders. Like, boom. But I know that was, you know, but. Yeah. Yeah. The, well, you know. Um, oh, yeah. Why, because why, it's, would, why would you include the, the relatives? Why do you think you would include the relatives? Because probably they were of the same mindset. Could or, be, or whatever, and it would end it, end that type of thinking or cruelty or viciousness. Talking about somebody else being a rat, you know, where uh, you know, well, I have to get what I want, so let's go look and find dirt on that guy. Yeah, and maybe, maybe that, maybe that's the reason. I don't know, and maybe. Maybe because they thought that the relatives of those people that were killed would unite and create a war or, or revenge on their own against the king. Yeah, could be. But could be. That always happens in all the books of the Old Testament and all the stuff we saw on kings and all that. They always went out 
and they wiped out everybody. Everybody. Their yeah. mother, their son, their children, their daughter, their wife. Everybody was wiped out. Whenever they went somewhere, they wiped out everybody. That was Herod. He did a lot of that. Well, and think of the mafia. Who does yeah. they have to go after? You owe them money, but who do they go after? Yeah, your family. family. Yeah. Your loved one. Why is that? Yeah. Because it gives them leverage, right? Mm -hmm. True. Gives you a little bit yeah. of leverage there. Could be that too, but yeah, they're all good reasons. I mean, they're all good reasons for doing what he did. But um, but of course, what I was thinking of was who else got thrown to the lions? Oh, those guys who came up that made uh, Darius come up with the law. Well, you no, know, I'm talking about later. I, I'm not talking about this story. But who else? When you hear people thrown to the lions, who do you, who else do you think of in history? The gladiators. Yeah. gladiators. Yeah. Gladiators. Yeah. All the gladiators. <laughs> yeah, the Romans do, and the and the, the Romans were always doing that nonsense, right? Yeah, but but who else? Who else lost their lives to the to the lions? Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters in Christ, who lost their oh, lives to the lions? Who? Oh, the martyrs. The martyrs. Oh, the lions. Christians. The Christians were thrown into the arena and they were used to, to entertain the crowds and they were they were pulled apart by the lions. Yeah, they, our own our own Christian brothers and sisters of the early church uh, under uh, Nero and uh, a couple others. It was sport to throw the Christians to the lions. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Terrible. They actually have accounts of, of Christians. Uh, a lot, and sometimes it was like a, a young virgin woman uh, who would be thrown to the lions because they wouldn't give up their faith. Yeah, because remember, Christianity wasn't always accepted. That wasn't until 313 with Emperor Constantine, but all the emperors before him, no. You know, they had the burning of Jerusalem, you have the, the torture of the Christians, you have the martyrs. Yeah, it's, uh, that's one of the things uh, that may come to mind. When you hear about the lions and the the bloodshed yeah anyway um but anyway god rescues daniel and what does the king do is the king happy yeah he's yeah. real happy <laughs> yeah he's, he's very so happy, happy that, so happy that it makes daniel's god uh, the law of the land exactly yes yeah. it says he wrote to all the peoples and nations of every language throughout the whole world that would have been his empire um, mm -hmm. he made a decree and, uh, so he's very, very happy. And once again, the witness of Daniel lifting up his God above even his own life causes somebody, and this is a very significant somebody to praise God. Remember, we had this uh, back with Nebuchadnezzar. You know, here's little old Daniel uh, and his friends, and they just, just because of their faith in God and continuing to obey God, they end up being a great witness in this foreign land to not just their neighbor down the street, but the king of the country. So, you know what they say three times the charm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, good stuff. Good stuff. Anything else you notice from this story? Anything else jump out at you? I think one of the... Not chapter... Not, not chapter six, but chap, well, chapter five. Uh-huh. What well, I read it three times because I wasn't sure... I was thinking, right, do you know how like you do sometimes you just, you read things that, and you interpret it different? Yeah. Well, I kept thinking about Nebuchadnezzar and his son. We all know that Nebuchadnezzar, how close was Nebuchadnezzar and his son that his son didn't know about Daniel, number one, didn't know that his father did an about face more than one time about praising Daniel's God and all that. So I guess 
I guess I kept thinking of my mother was the one who taught me my religion, per se. Mm-hmm. You know, she was the prayer warrior. She was. So it, it kind of told me in my head, like, you don't keep your religion quiet. Mm-hmm. You know, so why didn't he, why didn't Nebuchadnezzar say to his son, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, I don't think he was a tiny little infant when Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel had, at least that's how I'm thinking. That doesn't mean I'm right. But that's what struck me that if, when you read this, now his wife knew. Yeah, and that was most likely his mother. He didn't. Oh, you think that was his, his mother? There's, there's belief that that was probably his mother. Oh, okay. Yeah, really? they, when they say the queen, they might be re- referring to her as the queen mother because that would make sense. Oh, for the okay. Very you're talking about. She would have definitely known Nebuchadnezzar and what he went through. Yeah. So belief that it was most likely his mother, but they refer to her as the queen, like the queen mother. You know? Uh-huh. Yeah, almost like um, you have like King George and then you had Queen Elizabeth. But right. so Philip is still called a prince. He's never called the king. Almost that kind mm-hmm. of understanding, if you will. Mm-hmm. So that's believed that yeah. she was actually his mother. And then it makes perfect sense that she would have known. Known, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Do they know that for certain? Uh, that, that was. They don't know for certain, but it, it would have been very strange for his wife to have remembered all of that when he didn't remember it. It doesn't make sense that yeah. No, I mean, the relationship of, of Belshazzar to the King Nebuchadnezzar. Because my, my Bible says a descendant of Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah, his son. I don't think of his I, I think of that someone much further down the line than my son. Well, I think <laughs> well, if you look, let's look back at our, our timeline. That was what I gave out to everybody the first uh, session. Let's let's check it out. Let's see what that says there. Um, let's see if he's in there. I don't really see him. That's because it goes by the kingdom instead of the king. Uh, let's see, Nebuchadnezzar. Nico, Paul of Nineveh, Cyrus. Yeah, notice if you look at the page that looks like this, this one here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, yeah. that one there. You see, Neo Babylonian Empire, Nebuchadnezzar, six hundred five or four to five sixty two B.C. See that up there? Mm-hmm. And then you go down, and then you have um, Amal Marduk, Neriglisar, Labashi Marduk, Nabonidus, and then you see Belshazzar. Yeah, oh. with, with a question mark. So. Is he a son, but a younger son? Um, I don't know, but he doesn't show up until, what is that, 23 years after Nebuchadnezzar has gone. Hmm. Right? Because he shows up in 549, and they're saying Nebuchadnezzar ended in 562. Yeah. Uh, Is that 13 years? 13 years, I'm sorry. 13 years after. They don't say. We'd have to look that up and, and see more clearly what the scholars say about that. I don't know. I guess they don't have a perfect lineage. Yeah. You know. But yeah, for some reason he wasn't aware of it. Now, remember the circumstance. There's a lot of possibilities here. Just be well, and you have to remember your Christian influence in your life affects your family life in many ways. These people are not Christians. So <laughs> family life is going to reflect that. Just like we see today, there's so many families that have issues because they're not Christians, you know, and that, that plays it into your family. So I'm not saying families are perfect because they're Christian, but when they're not Christian, there are a lot of issues, there are a lot of chaos. So would Nebuchadnezzar been close to his dad? Maybe not. Maybe. Yeah. Um, and one of the one of the things that struck me when Vicky said 
you get your religion from your parents. I mean, uh, look at King David. I mean, he was he was like really the apple of God's eye, but his sons left a lot to be desired. Yeah, yeah. But yet Solomon ended up being the greatest mm. king. Yeah. Of course, he, he kept his faith. The other ones were more power hungry, but that was last uh, that was last year's Bible study, right, Armando? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, that could have had a lot to do with it. They're in a pagan world. It's, it's a pagan group. And the way we think of family maybe wasn't the way they did, especially for royals. I mean, if you just here, use the example of the royal family now. I mean, in England, holy cow. Talk about dysfunctional, you know, and they're supposed to be yeah. Christian, but there's a yeah. lot of craziness in that family. Um, all the way down to mm. who's the, the younger son now, the um, the redhead. Um, Harry. 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 <laughs> Harry. Harry and Megan, and now they don't know if they want to be royal. They don't want to be royal. They want to live. Oh, my goodness. What a mess. And uh, so who knows? You know, Nebuchadnezzar, maybe they didn't have yeah. a close relationship i don't know but for whatever reason yeah he uh he doesn't know it until his mother or slash wife whatever it was yeah yeah mm -hmm. i i think one of the things that stands out to me is here's daniel did daniel do anything spectacular in his faith well for one thing he never never wavered he never wavered it no. was just that <laughs> daily devotional um notice uh he's described let me go back to that uh let me see where that is um i think it's uh let's see i'm in six six uh do, do, do. let me see no it um Let me see if I can find it. It's where they say he's faithful. Now, it might have been back in five, but and I've lost my place with that. But somewhere it describes him as being faithful to his God. Um, maybe it's the king. Yeah, it's a verse. It's 616. Before the king throws him into the lion's den, he says, may your God whom you faithfully serve deliver you. That's, mm. that's a great description. It doesn't seem like a big deal. Uh, I think your, your uh, version said continually, right, Glenn? Yes. Yeah, continually. There's nothing special about continually, is there? It's not like you're going on a crusade for God every other month. It's yeah. just steady continuous devotion to god mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. look where that got him it got him into trouble <laughs> among <laughs> among non-believers but then it also what secured his salvation didn't it yes because yeah. god honored that um, and rescued him so i i think it's great for just us ordinary Christians to hear that and to see that in action. You know, he yeah. didn't have to do anything spectacular mm -hmm. uh, for God to notice him, for God to rescue him. He just was mm -hmm. you know, every day devoted kind of guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's pretty cool. Right. Um, yeah. And I think it makes us wonder, well, what do I try and do day in and day out with God? Uh, is it my prayer life? Is it serving? Is it um, uh, praising God? What What is it that's just my my steadfast devotion mm -hmm. uh, that may get us into trouble, but may also be the whole uh, reason why uh, yeah. we're worth saving, you know? Yeah. So I, I think that was pretty cool there. I think the other thing here is, did anybody think about any any did, did Jesus come to mind at all when you were reading this story of Daniel in the lion's den? Well, Jesus was, uh, you know, with with uh, being crucified, you know, for for being faithful. 
he was being crucified. Right, right. There are a lot there, of parallels, uh, a lot of parallels uh, with Jesus in this story when you think mm. about it. What, what are some of the parallels with Jesus, especially thinking specifically about Daniel in chapter six now and what he goes through? Uh, there, you know, people were, uh, became against Jesus just as they turned against Daniel, mm -hmm. plotted plotted against him yep to get rid of him yep um you know so he they made him suffer as jesus suffered um you know of course uh, not to the extent that, that jesus suffered but uh but a lot of the same things they they pulled a lot of the same tricks on him as they did on jesus a lot of the nasty things that they did mm -hmm. um and uh, what so, was Daniel doing when uh, he was arrested? Well, he was praying. He was praying. Where was Jesus was when he was arrested? Praying, and that's what he, Jesus was in the Garden of Garden of, Garden of Olives. Yep, he was praying. Um, right. The king tried to free uh, Daniel. Did anybody try and free? Did any oh, governor? Yeah. What's yeah. that? Yes. Pilate, yeah. Pilate. Well, Pilate. Pilate. Barabbas. Yeah. Well, P Pilate tried to. Yeah. Pilate. Yeah. Yeah. And Pilate eventually succumbed to the law. Right. Which was, you know, you can't have insurrection. You know, this is uh, somebody's claiming to be king. You can't have that. You got to put him to death. Mm -hmm. Here's King Belshazzar stuck with this law. Same it idea. Irreversible. Mm hmm. Yeah. And that whole den of lions, what do they what do they put in front of it to keep it shut? Big rock. Oh, that, uh, oh, that stone. The stone, the rock, yeah. Yeah. And of course we know Jesus would went into a tomb and they rolled the rock in front. Yeah. And then the miraculous rescue, right? Mm -hmm. And Daniel never suffers in any way. He never is harmed. Right. Uh, but of course Jesus ultimately. Uh, really receive the ultimate harm uh, he sure. dies but yeah a lot of parallels there um mm -hmm. so again even as a christian to have you know some of that reminding us of what jesus went through um it brings it to mind again mm -hmm. for us i think the other thing is uh when you read that decree that king darius wrote uh he's describing now here is a non-believer right describing mm -hmm. god the god of daniel and his kingdom and look at how he describes it right how does he describe god living god that endures forever his kingdom shall never end never be destroyed his dominion has no end he delivers and rescues he works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth um so it's, uh, you know, it's uh, pretty strong that he uh, uh, makes that decree that everybody should uh, then worship, worship God throughout the whole world, his, his world. Mm. Um, yeah, notice how he describes yeah. God, the living God. Um, living God. Yeah. He endures forever. Forever. Uh, mm -hmm. He, he delivers, he rescues. Of course, he saw it in action, right? He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is amazing. Here's a, a pagan yeah. who's describing God with the words that you, you could read just as easily in the Psalms that David wrote, you know? Right. And yeah. to top it off, here's a king of a kingdom and this is an empire, right? This is the biggest empire in the world. This is the superpower in his day and age. Here's the leader of the superpower. And what is he admitting about his own kingdom? Just by how he describes God in his kingdom. My kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of David, Daniel. Well, he also says that his dominion has no end. Whose? So God's, God's dominion. dominion has no end. 
Right. And his and his will have an end. Exactly. Eventually. Yeah. Right. Even if it's just through his own death, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. I, he, it, it, it only makes sense that if God's kingdom is forever, this God's kingdom is forever, then his own earthly kingdom isn't going to be around forever. It's right. That's right. quite an acknowledgement for a king who happens to be the superpower. Mm. Yes. <laughs> you never right. hear that from a president of the United States. You never hear that. <laughs> I mean, I've never. <laughs> I mean, if, if this was the New Testament, I would say that the Holy Spirit was with him. Who revealed mm. this to him? Definitely. But Definitely revealed. Not. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he seemed like a humble guy. You yeah. know, we don't get a sense that he's like Belshazzar for sure. Yeah. He's not like Nebuchadnezzar even. This is a no. different guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. Oh, he, liked, he liked Daniel. Yeah. Yep. And of course, like you noted, Daniel was high in rank at the beginning of this story, and he's ending up high in rank still at the end of this story. Mm -hmm. uh, so God has certainly been keeping Daniel. And again, you have to remember yeah. his setting. He's away from home. He's The Israelites have lost everything in the covenant. The covenant mm -hmm. is broken. It's, it's done. And yet God is active in another land still with his own people and the, and there's a relationship to be had with god even outside of israel mm -hmm. and and you know if you're a, an exile you need to hear that yeah because you don't you know remember when when did the nation of israel reconvene as a nation uh 1953 1948 no, 1948 how many years is this <laughs> um, <couple. laughs> a, a few, lot. a few. <laughs> so, if you were, if you were a Jew when you were sent into exile, say you're a Southern Jew, Babylon comes in, and you're you're done, you're taken away. Imagine you don't know if you're ever going to go home. You want to, but you don't know if that's ever going to happen. Mm -hmm. So the only thing right. you hope will happen is that God's going to be with you, no matter where you go. Mm -hmm. Right. So that, that's huge. That's a huge uh, step in, in someone's faith. Right. And then, of course, that, that whole understanding of human laws and God's law. Mm. Whose law usurps which one? Got a question? The, yeah, yeah, like... The law so that the God's law would be supreme over any other law. So that would have had to have been an eye opener for the king and the people of mm -hmm. Persia, because here, any law that this king passes is immutable, can't be changed. Once it's set, it's set. And yet, he has to change his law in light of God. So who ultimately has the power there? It can't be the king. It has to be God. So that's again revealed. So a lot, of, a lot of interesting things going on. It's very interesting to me how much of the scriptures, and I don't think most people get this, how much of the scripture reveals uh, God's relationship with people in power. Did you notice that? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we just went through first, second Samuel, first, second Kings, of course, Chronicles with that. You know, Moses and Pharaoh, Paul and the governors, uh, Jesus and Pilate. I, I think most people think the Christian Bible is all about, you know, us little people, but we're involved. But look at how many times God speaks to power, earthly power, human power, trying mm -hmm. to get his message across. Isn't it amazing? Uh, I think Daniel's bringing that home for me more than before. Because uh, here Daniel is right there in the midst of the affairs of the kings. Yeah. So, mm. pretty interesting. Well, good stuff. What, anybody else have any comments or questions about uh, five and six? No, it's good. Well, they were the easy chapters. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now we're gonna get into some some craziness here. A little bit of unusual things. And we'll do our best to understand them. Although I will tell you with eschatological literature, uh, it's not the easiest. It's like trying to read the book of Revelation and get a full grasp on it. But we'll do our best. We'll try to figure it out. Uh, but next week, we will look at chapters 7 and 8. So uh, now you begin to hear about Daniel's visions. Apocalyptic okay. literature. We're getting into it. <laughs> right? So... We'll see what it means, but um, good stuff today. Good stuff. Um, what about uh, our our prayer focus and any prayer requests? Our prayer focus. Do you want to keep on keeping on with this? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So we'll continue to pray about the challenge of of bringing people uh, back to the church and to God and, and especially uh, uh, previous members and new members, so to speak. So, all right. And any special prayer requests or updates? No, oh, still need prayer for Amy. <laughs> okay. How's she doing? Yeah. Uh, depends on the moment. <laughs> mm. Mm a lot of work to do there's a lot of work to do what uh what could we pray specifically for for her um it's a willingness to look at where look at her issues honestly face her issues honestly and okay that's it yeah okay is she your sister Pat, is she your sister? Or is... No, she's hey, who, my granddaughter. Hey. Oh, your granddaughter. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's that's a hard uh, that's a hard one. Mm -hmm. It's hard for anybody. Oh, and uh, yeah, and Ellie and Amy's maternal grandmother is uh, in hospice. She's in uh, she lives in Florida. She's in hospice in Florida, so she. She isn't expected to live uh, very much longer. Mm. And, and she they have some sort of virus. They said it's not COVID, but it's a virus that's attacked their, uh, her lungs and her liver. Mm. And um, yes, yeah, so she's in bad shape. Mm. Have they seen her? Uh, Haley went uh, to help her get to do some uh, business, some you know, she has a couple pieces of real estate down there mm. and things like that. But she's in the hospital. She's been in the hospital for a couple of weeks. She didn't tell them right away. Um, mm. But Haley went and uh, tried to help get some things organized and settled. Um, she could only go for a few days because she's working, too. Mm. Um, so, you know, so we need prayer to deal with that. Diane's mother, their mother's their mother's mother. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. And Joyce and Tony, how's? Uh, oh, they're both at the hospital, and I spoke to Joyce, and she's sound, sounding like her old self again. I mean, the first time I talked to her, she hardly had a voice at all. She was pretty weak too. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tony was not having a whole bunch of bad side effects, but he was feeling it. But by the time she got home, uh, uh, he was much better, and, and now they're definitely on, on the way to recovery. Good. So she, she started to feel her old self because she told me she's absolutely bored. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's her old self. <laughs> yep. Good, good. Um, uh, our Joyce is back in the hospital. I don't know specifically for what. Uh, but she left rehab and had to go back to the hospital. So I'm trying to hunt her down and figure out what's going on there. Um, and then Tony went, uh, was going for, is going for his driving test, was was going. But well, his uh, his eye operations on the ninth for his cataracts. Okay. 
and and then on the 11th is when he's going for his driving test. Ooh. I uh, I was supposed to see him today, but I I got I got kind of I I hurt my ribs about a week ago, and the pain went away, and slowly it was starting to come back, and it got so bad this morning I couldn't move, I could hardly get out of bed at all. Mm. And every little movement really hurts. So actually, uh, I went to, uh, um, what do you call that thing I get? Injection? Infusion. Infusion. Went to infusion. infusion this morning mm -hmm. and saw my doctor this afternoon about my ribs. And then I went and got an x-ray um, just before class. Oh. And so, but believe it or not, when I when it's nighttime, I always feel better. But the morning's killer. Mm. So I mean, so when I got up this morning, I really got worried because you know the, this injury happened a week ago. And instead of getting better, I feel like worse every day until this morning. Mm. So I finally broke down and went to the doctor, like Vicky told me to do. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, so uh, they took an X-ray, and uh, he's going to let me know in a, uh, probably Monday what uh, what they found, if anything. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll add you to the prayer list here. Okay. Good. Anybody else? Um, I don't know how many of you uh, remember Pastor Mike from the Williamstown Assembly of God. Uh, when we would do those prayer weeks with the different churches coming. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He, uh, he, he retired last year. Uh, and when he retired, um, he knew that he had already begun uh, the effects of Parkinson's. And uh, he's really getting, uh, it's getting harder and harder for him to walk. So mm -hmm. his, his name is Mike. Just keep him in your prayers, if you will. Uh, and his wife, Mike is you know, six foot something, tall guy, broad shouldered is guy. That, is that, is maybe is five. That the, uh, the, the church, the white church down near Cross Keys? Over by the Walmart in Williamstown. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, he was a real nice guy. Yeah, very. I remember. Yep. Yeah. yeah. His wife is maybe five feet tall. So uh, she literally helps walk him in and out of the car and things like that. Oh. So uh, keep. Mike and Gail in your prayers, if you will. Is he, is, he's not that old. Uh, he just retired last year, so he's probably in his late 60s, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't think he was that old. He always looked younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that's, a, that's a shame. Yeah, well, definitely have to pray for him. Definitely, definitely. Okay, well, anybody else? Then uh, let's close with prayer. Blessed Lord, we give you thanks for the resilience of your spirit that abides in men and women uh, like Daniel, who just kept up their devotion to you and their daily prayers. Uh, even now you speak to us in how we can maintain that relationship with you. Uh, and just enjoy your presence uh, each and every day. Uh, we thank you for that witness that Daniel gave and how you responded to that witness <laughs> and how that gives Ooh. us hope in our own day and age uh, that we can keep on doing those little things that uh, you ask of us and that they make all the difference in the world. We lift up those who are in need of prayer, especially we pray for Amy. Um, who's still trying to figure out her future and uh, in doing so needs to incorporate a look into her past and into her present and especially in her heart. Uh, give her the strength, Lord, uh, to be honest with herself and whatever the issues are that she's facing, uh, that she may um, respond to reality uh, without needing any kind of crutch uh, and just trusting you uh, to help her through. And Lord, we pray for um, Haley and Amy as well as they uh, mourn the, the sickness and uh, of situation of their grandmother. And I'm sure that brings up a lot of grief for them as well uh, over their mom. 
So be with uh, their grandmom and uh, bring her your peace and your love and watch over the, the whole family uh, as they look after one another. And we pray for uh, Glenn and we pray that he would get a good report from the doctor and that your healing power would be upon him and his rib cage uh, and help him to know that you are ever close to him. And may you be with Joyce uh, as she goes back to the hospital. We know, Lord, that must uh, be a weary, weary uh, experience for her. And we just pray that you would hold her spirit up and that she would feel the prayers of her brothers and sisters at church uh, and all of those who love and care for her, uh, that she may know that uh, you are giving her strength each and every day uh, to uh, see what, what lies ahead and that you'd be able to bring her back home yet again. And Lord, we also lift up uh, Mike and Gail, uh, sustain them with your presence, give her strength and give Mike peace um, as they deal with the day-to-day -day effects of his illness. And Lord, as you are with each of us, uh, help us to be a faithful witness in whatever circumstances you bring to us. Uh, let us remember that your love for us is everlasting. And that just as that king declared, uh, your kingdom is truly forever. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, everybody. Good stuff. So we will meet again uh, next week and hopefully uh, see you Sunday. Okay. Great. Good night. All right. Good night. Good night. God bless. Have a good Bye. week. God bless. Good All I'll hang in. Fun. I'll hang in. Okay. I just want want to let you know that uh, I got the laptop down on top of the shelf where the uh, the uh, Christian education TV is yes uh, I I got um, I turned on the TV and signed it into the Wi-Fi 